Hi, beauty fam. Welcome back to Mickey Car Beauty. I'm Mickey Carico, and on my channel, I love to talk about luxury skincare and beauty. Today, I'm doing my first ever Will I Buy It video. So there's a lots of releases coming up that I just recall that I've been start I've been starting to just do screenshots of things that I'm interested in thinking about getting. And so this first one is from Danessa Myricks, and it's the Lightworks Four palette. And I ended up getting the Lightworks Three palette for the first time last year and I love it. I It was one of my favorite purchases from last year. These are generally limited edition. On the Danessa Myricks Instagram, the colors look like they're mostly blue and purple and then some greens and a lot of duo and multi-chromes. And it looks like this is different from last year. Last year had the center part is uh, mostly highlighters but it looks like two of those blue shades i think heaven and intuition i'm looking at it's hard to read off of the screenshot but two of those colors are meant to be mixed with water so it's very painterly-esque and i think that's so cool i love teal blues and royal blues i'm really about this palette so this um i'm trying to get this up and edited uh i'm filming today at uh, monday september 12th and this goes live for purchase on 12.01 a.m uh on the 13th so tomorrow and i she posted uh, today that it, it goes live at 12.01 a.m and i quickly chimed in i'm like Pacific Coast time, East Coast time, because I'm I'm gonna be on her website purchasing that. So that is what the packaging looks like. It's really beautiful. And uh, I don't wanna sleep on this because once it's sold out, it's sold out. So she reissued that Lightworks 3 palette, but it's not the same iteration. That, that middle part of the highlights is missing in the re-release. I think that retails US dollars 125. And I love her her duo chromes and multi chromes. I've tried indie brands. I understand that she wasn't the first to do that. However, I do like her formula better than what I've tried from Cleona and other indie brands. They're just too crumbly and not um, age eyelid friendly. I really like that her formula, the duo chromes and multi chromes are very smooth on the eyes and they don't have mad crazy glitter fallout and they also don't emphasize the texture on my eyes. Uh, next up is a product, Chantecai. So Chantecai is that Jaguar, Jaguar and Cougar collection for fall. And I was kind of interested in the Cougar one because of that blue, but I'm just, just really honestly out of the four pan palettes that they've come out with, I'm just not a fan of that formula. So they usually have one matte in there or two mattes and then satin shades and then one kind of multi-chrome or duochrome shade. I have found that that multi-chrome uh, shade usually has a lot of fallout and I'm not a fan of their shadows, at least this iteration. I love the duochrome, the Lux Le Chrome Duo a formula of shadows, but for the rest of the Chantecaille eyeshadows, I'm not a fan of. What I am a fan of are the Lip Chic and the lipstick formula, with the, which this is. I, this product, it's the um, the Lip Veil formula. And to me, in my opinion, uh, the Elephant uh, collection was the most tan person, brown person friendly collection they've come out with. Everything else that's come out with Chantecaille in terms of their lip color story has not been really, to me, um, like tan person or deeper person friendly. I just find that a lot of the colors look like different iterations of nudie pink that look best on people with light to light medium complexion. I do love that berry color. I think I would be interested in that, but I also, um, I already have a berry color in Lip Veil Elderberry, which is this color, and I hardly ever use it. And it looks very similar to this one above. And so, you know, the elderberry it looks very similar so i don't think i'm gonna get anything from that collection moving on from the instagram vice say 0315 i think this person is maybe based in asia and this person has really fantastic uh like sneak peeks of releases for luxury they posted this picture of a dior quint that's coming out maybe for the fall or holiday i'm not sure it does give me a uh, soft cashmere or tutu vibes. I don't have tutu, so I'm interested in this one because it looks like a neutral but cool tone, purpley leaning um, 
palette. So this palette, it says 1947. It does remind me a little bit of this palette, the Soft Cashmere, but it definitely looks like it has more purple vibes. So I'm definitely interested in that if it ends up coming stateside. They uh, posted this next picture, which is part of the collection. I don't know the name of it. There are two Dior lippies, and then it looks like maybe a highlighter. I'm not somebody to get a lot of highlighters. I have enough in my collection. It's one of the uh, least loved or used product in my collection are highlighters. I don't really desire getting more highlighters. So that's a pass for me. And the lipstick formula, I love the colors of Dior, but I don't like the smell of the lipstick. So that's an easy pass for me. Next up, uh, the same Instagram, the same ig -er has posted pictures of the new Tom Ford uh, quads. And I know there's this one is green and then there's one that is kind of purple. I, I think the new formula is nice. I'm not like gaga over it. I really do love the wet and dry formula. I think the new formula is very, it's better than the original matte formula they had. It's very beginner friendly. It's kind of foolproof, goof proof. What I don't like about this quad and greens have to, are tricky on me because I have deeper skin, tan, deeper skin, is that I think that color story, if you look compared to this, I had to be really careful on the greens because, and the grays, because it ends up looking ashy or muddy on me. And if I were gonna to compare, I already have the Tom Ford Photosynthesex Quad, which I love. This is a great green, at least on my skin tone. So you can see this is more of like a vibrant green. That's more of like a muted moss. And those colors, they look okay on me. They just don't pop. And I have a lot of green in my collection, so I'm not really super keen on this color. It's 38 Velours Khaki Quad. I think these are spending like $88 or $89. So, um, and I just recently bought the Chanel Tweeds collection and those were 88 a pop. So, so I'm not interested in any of those. And here's the other thing too, is that, you know, there are a lot of those quads end up at cosmetics company stores. So I'm kind of low key waiting for those to show up there and then maybe can get those on discount. Uh, the next one, now this is the Tom Ford collection I am interested in. And I have no, nothing about these other than these might be part of the Soleil Neige collection. These although they're white, I'm thinking this, I'm wondering if this is part of the Christmas collection. These look gorgeous. So, and I'm also curious about the formula because to me, Tom Ford, it's one of my favorite formulas of the wet dry formulas of the OG, like the old school ones. The new ones are kind of like inconsistent in my opinion. Like a lot of Tom Ford is inconsistent with their color story. Sometimes there isn't pigment payoff. I think they've kind of remixed and rehashed a lot of their quads for colors and pans they have already. So it's for me, it's just like really looking carefully if these are remixes. So there's uh, there's white packaging, which is gorgeous. The first one is Chalet Lust, which has like this um, cool tone, uh, purple lilac and like muted tones. And the Après Ski uh, looks like kind of like warmer, but a little bit of cool tones with a little bit of red. They both look gorgeous. I'm really curious to see what that formula is if it's wet dry. Definitely if it's wet dry, I am definitely getting those if I can get my hands on them. And so this next picture, part of that collection, it comes with some sort of lipstick and um i they, they came out with like one that was gold that changed uh color according to your ph or temperature of your body i never picked that up that that seemed really gimmicky to me so and i'm also not the biggest fan of well tom ford i love the colors and pigmentation but i just don't like the smell of the lipsticks they put too much lavender in their lipstick smell and they traditionally have turned really quickly so uh, apparently they changed the formula we'll see if that actually changed, but look at these swatches from Chalet Lust and Ski. They look gorgeous. It could, you know what I'm thinking? That Chalet Lust looks a lot like the formula from um, that Metal Lust that came in this packaging with the, yeah, the chrome ombre effect that one like this, the package, this is um, the Metal Lust palette. I think it's going to be a formula like these two and maybe all four are like that and the same with Après Ski, it might be all three or four with that same formula, which is, it's not, it's not a wet dry formula, but it's divine. It's like a shimmery, creamy, it's almost, it feels almost like a creamy, creamy eyeshadow, but in a pan form. So if these come over stateside, let me know. I am so interested in these two Tom Ford quads. Okay, moving on, it looks like 
There are two Dior holiday palettes. So 589 Galactic. It's like a smoky, cool tone palette. And then 359 Cosmic Eyes. I'm on the fence about these. Again, I compared to my skin tone, I have to be really careful about things that look gray and gray green because they can look really muddy very easily on my skin tone. I would be interested in getting more, see more swatches of these. If there are, if there's one that I'm interested in, it's the 359 Cosmic Eyes, which has on the right side, it's more gray, cool tone. So you can have a nice smoky look, but on the left side, there looks like to be like a plum, plum red color at the bottom. And then a beautiful beigey warm tone color on the left side. So I see more dimension and getting more out of that quint than um, the first one. But you know, I'm kind of on the fence about these. If like, if those Tom Ford ones come out, I'm definitely gonna get my hands on that if I can. And then then if I get those, that's gonna be like $89, $90 each. Um, I probably wouldn't get these Dior Quints then if I get that Tom Ford, those two Tom Ford qu um, quads. Okay, moving on again from the account from Vice, a 0315 so it's a gucci limited edition cushion packaging and i'd be curious if this was european or asia only because if it is i, I would really wonder if they're going to have really inclusive shade range for this i love that packaging i just what gucci alessandro is doing in terms of gucci of the print designs um i love it i love everything he's doing i think they're it's great I am almost tempted just to get it for the packaging, but we'll see, we'll see. I just wanna see if there's actually, if there is a shade that actually could be my color, I think I would be interested in getting that. So if it comes stateside, so I'm just, I love that packaging. I'm a sucker for Gucci packaging, but let's see. I'm wearing the Gucci blush today and so far so good. Moving on, Suku collection. I am definitely picking up items from the Suku collection. What I think is interesting is that when I look at my YouTube videos, those are probably like the least watched and least liked videos in my YouTube um, like repertoire and playlists. And I think it has to do with that it's not, it's not accessible stateside. Like it's a Japanese brand and only sold in Asia and Japan exclusively. And then if it's outside of Japan, it's only sold at Selfridges or Harrods and sometimes Cult Beauty, sometimes not. And this collection is called the Aurora Breakup. I did contact Selfridges and asked them, I am interested in getting these items on pre-order. And the colors look by the promo pics, lots of blues, teal blues, and teal blues and purples. So all of those color stories I love. I am really tempted to, I'm definitely getting both eyeshadow quads. I am tempted to get the eyeliner if I can get my hands on it. It's sometimes really hard to get them on this in the state side. Often they're sold out beforehand. And then if I were to get a blush, and so I'm curious if this is the old formula blushes or the new one. It looks like the blush is on the left hand side and then maybe to the right there are two different highlighter colors that you can use individually or swirl together. So I'd have to see how those watch and I'm definitely interested I'm t I think what will look better on me is that brown one is like a neutral one but I love the highlighter colors of the one on the left with the plum color and uh the it looks like blue purple lilac highlighter I just think that one on the left is going to look beautiful if you have a deeper skin tone that's going to look gorgeous they have lipstick I'm not a fan of this lipstick formula so that's an easy pass for me if I end up getting one of those blushes or two, I'm going to skip the eyeliner, but I'm definitely going to review that on my channel. And the last thing are the lip glosses. I might pick up one, but I'm not out of my channel. The things I don't use the most and don't really love to buy are highlighters and glosses because I just have a lot of glosses that I have a hard time getting through. So here are some swatches of the eyeshadows. Looks gorgeous. And here are close-ups of the eyeshadow. Here's the blue and purple one, definitely my wee house, and here's the warmer tone one. If I were to pass, it would be the warmer tone one, but I want both. <laughs> okay, moving on. Again, a same same Instagram, just giving them credit. Here is the NARS, I think, the holiday collection. The only thing that I find appealing is that purple shade, that lilac shade in that in that eyeshadow 
palette. So to me, it's not worth getting that whole thing. I think I'm at my max on NARS. I've just found a lot of the color stories for NARS. They seem to be on repeat. I'm not a huge fan of their blushes, so I'm gonna pass on that. Okay, so now we're moving on to Trend Mood 1. So this is the Chanel Holiday Collection. These, I guess the whole theme is that it's based on the moon. I think it's really beautiful, the embossing. I think these colors are going to look beautiful on tan brown skin and deeper complected people. I'm curious to see swatches of these. Am I going to buy it? Likely not, because these limited edition products from Chanel tend to be, as we've seen, the prices have been going up. So I can only imagine what this limited edition highlighter is going to be. So it's an easy pass for me. Again, highlighters are not like a thing that I lust over for makeup. I am interested in the eyeshadow quad, but I am also feel like it's very similar to what I have on my eyes today. So I am wearing the Z to the Tweed 01 Tweed Cuivia, which is copper. And I think it's more warm tone than this. I think that's gonna be like, a, definitely this gold, there's like a gold, gold color in there. And then it looks like a brown and a pinky shimmer. These look like all shimmer shades. So I'd be curious to see I'd be curious to see swatches of this. I think the embossing is cool, like it looks like the moon, but as we know, just like these tweeds, the embossing is going to wear off on these. So it's a maybe for me, but I want to see swatches and because it could, could be a pass if I think, it could be a pass if I think it's too much of a dupe. So I'm kind of maxed out on Chanel anyway, because I gave them all my money for the four tweets. Okay, so switching to Trend Mood, it's this Dior Quint, and I forget the number of it. It has come out already. It was supposed to be an Asia exclusive, but I think it got released here in the state side. Um, this is a hard no for me because it's basically my skin tone, and this is going to be like beige. Like, basically, it'd be like <laughs> under eye powder, my skin tone, which is the bottom right one, and then just shades of beige, which why would I want to put that on my eyes? And then they have this like plum or this deep chocolate brown in the middle. This is why I really do think it was supposed to be an Asia exclusive because that's more a little bit of the aesthetic in Asia where it's very light ethereal washes of color, not really pops of color like in the in the Western trend. So definite easy pass for me. So a hard no, uh, but the embossing is beautiful. Okay, so Trend Mood, uh, one, again, this is the release, it's already released, the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. So for me, so no, when I saw this, it was like, if Bronze Seduction, I grabbed my palettes, if Bronze Seduction and the Retro Palette had a baby. So very similar color stories. And for me, like, you know, people, I enjoy the Natasha Denona formula. I don't love it. I love Pat McGrath more and other, her, her formulas, her creamy mattes and her mattes are hard for me to blend. So I've actually been thinking that I might declutter some of these and sell these Natasha Denona palettes because the newer formula I find is harder to blend on my eyes. I just don't have time to like sit there all day to blend. And I just look at when I've seen her uh, aesthetic of how she does her makeup she loves a love and she comes from a modeling career an editorial career her style though is that she loves to smoke out her shadows like really dramatic and that's just not my style it's really really smoky so she'll go super heavy-handed and I've never really liked that trend for me because it closes up my eyes and it's just kind of not my look and I just find that I don't know it's like a lot of money you get a lot of shadows but i find a lot of it's redundant to me this looks like a remix of again the bronze palette meets retro meets a little bit of the love palette and i'm already actually trying to sell the love palette i don't ever reach for that and i i'm just not big on the formula uh, my favorite uh, formula is the glam palette of natasha no and i won't ever get rid of that uh, i think that's probably her best one of this mini series but yeah i'm gonna pass on this i think even if it goes on sale i probably won't pick it up Okay, so Cheek Profile uh, official, Tavia. Tavia, she's so wonderful. If you could support her on Patreon, that'd be great too. That's how she kind of gives you exclusive members only, um, exclusive access to things that she sees beforehand. So this is the Tom Ford face palette. I have tried at least two Tom Ford face, face palettes in the past and um, it looks so pretty. And I think these are like almost, I wanna say almost $200. I'll put 
if I find out how much it is, but it's just spendy because it's Tom Ford. You're paying for the packaging and the designer name. I think I saw Bruce some of initial reviews of this on Instagram that it was terrible. So I think I've not been a fan of these face palettes. So that's a definite no. That's an easy no for me because of the price. And I just, here's the thing like about me and palettes, if one of the products don't work, I get really upset. Like I want all of them to work. Like everything in that in a palette has to work. Like a face palette has to work for me or else I get really upset because that I spent all that money. That's just me. Some people are like, oh, most of it works and then maybe the blush doesn't work. No, for me, that's like really upsetting because these fast face palettes are so expensive. Like everything has to work. So that's just me. And that's happened with Tom Ford in the past where I might like the eyeshadows, but I don't like the bronzer or the blush and then I'm just like unhappy with it. Okay, so. so here next cheek profile official Tavia posted pictures of the new hourglass face palettes, um, the like light palettes and I guess they're kind of doing that Shantakai thing where they're donating money to wildlife nonprofits and kudos to hourglass. It sounds like they're listening finally. They're trying to do like three different of choices for for light medium and deeper complected people so i appreciate that so it, it took a while so they're late to the party uh, so i think this will really work well i'm kind of curious to see reviews i am not interested in hourglass i was trying to find the ingredient list of what's in their products if you're not new to my channel you know that i've talked about this before I actually started uh, heavily you know, back in 2018 19 using hourglass and i love it it's beautiful like the color of the blush and the bronzers. Uh, what I don't like are the highlighters. I think it shows texture too much for me, but um, I know that Hourglass, because they put so much bismuth in their products traditionally, I don't know about this formula because I can't find it online, what's in the ingredient list. But in the past, Hourglass has used bismuth and that has caused me to break out and actually caused me to have acne scarring. So that's for me a hard no. Move on with the profile again. The limited edition Rouge Hermes matte lipstick. I love the matte lipstick formula from Hermes. I think it's so pigmented and I have a lot of uh, pigmentation underneath. And so it's one of the few matte formulas that actually feel really good on my lips and cover up my like my under pigmentation. So, um, Lisa Eldridge is the other product that does that. So I love the matte lipstick formula from Hermes. I think I would love to get the limited edition Rouge Hermes matte lipstick in that berry one. It's got it's the container here. It's um, it's the one that has more of a berry tone. It has like this purple, purple tone middle and the blue bottom. I think it's beautiful. I think because of the, um, I'm similar in complexion to the woman on the top right. So I think this would look beautiful. I don't, I don't know. I didn't see how much they cost, but we'll see. I might end up picking that up for the holidays, but I have a lot of lipsticks, so I don't know. So maybe. Okay, moving on to the Chantecaille collection. I think people are divided on this. Uh, it's hard. It's going to be a hard no. The only thing that might change my mind is if I'm seeing swatches on people who with a similar complexion to me. So I would probably look at um, Grace. Um, I think it's Everyday Edit. She loves Chantecaille, so I'm going to see how they look on her. Likely she'll pick that up. I just. You know, the thing about Chantica, you don't know until it's in your hands. I think the the packaging looks a little chintzy to me, but maybe it's one of those things that'll be beautiful. I think the top two are Big Gelée, which I'm keen about. I'm gonna pass on the lipstick. I don't like glitter and lipstick. I think if it's a Big Gelée, I don't know. Like, I just, I'm not really big on highlighters and I have enough blush. So I think this will probably be a pass for me. I think the last two, let's see, we're coming to a close. Um, I just wanted to highlight this Bobbi Brown one. The palette on the left is interesting to me because I love green. So this green palette I can get on board with, just not the other Tom Ford one. No, it looked really ashy. I am curious. I want to see people review this. I'm not going to buy it to review because I don't, I'm not familiar with Bobbi Brown. But if I can find a review on Bobbi Brown, if I can go to the store and swatch them in person or try them, or see a review, then I might think about getting the bottom left one. Because to me, that's kind of like fall vibes and a bit like fall grungy, but really pretty. So let me know, I've never tried Bobbi Brown. If you have, let me know. Okay, so the last, the last two that I have. So this one is Cheek Profile. She posted, Tavia posted that it looks like Chanel's gonna come out with blushes. It's a maybe for me, maybe, maybe no, because 
in the United States, they reformulated the blush formula and it's not good anymore. So I have an old, before they changed the formula, I quickly got my favorite Chanel blush, which is Malice before the reformulation. And if it's the new formula on state side, it's an easy pass. But even then, um, you know, like Chanel blushes, I think they're being like pushed out by Dior. Dior makes the best, I think, like in terms of like luxury right now, it's like Gucci, this is beautiful. Suku and Dior make lovely blushes. So I would have to see what these look like. It'd be a maybe if they're on sale. But... Okay, so the last one I wanted to sh highlight is uh, through Tenstopia. And it's a total like random one. It's the um, Naked uh, Urban Decay series, Naked by Robin Eisenberg. I think Robin Eisenberg is an illustrator and I'm kind of, I'm feeling this packaging. I'm feeling the illustrator, I love it. And before I started my beauty channel, I was using a lot more things like MAC, makeup, um, Urban Decay, and what was the other makeup I was using before? A lot of MAC, a lot of Urban Decay, and Huda Beauty. I haven't paid attention to Urban Decay because this Naked Palette series have been really boring to me, but I saw this pop up on my feed this week, and if I'm gonna be honest, it's the last three, it's the last three colors that are getting me, because I love purples and blues and teals. But I, I, this is a maybe for me. I'm just trying to get past the packaging because I think the packaging actually looks really cool. I love graphic design and I love illustrators and I love art. And these to me, I think it looks really cool. I, the, the graphics look cool, like the artist looks cool. Um, it might be a maybe. I'm not gonna get it just to review it. I think what I would do would go to the store and swatch it and try to convince myself not to buy it because I don't wanna just get caught up in the packaging and whatnot. I hope that was fun. Let me know if you want me to do more of these. Um, so much makeup comes out that it helps me also be accountable of like what I actually say I'm not going to buy. So I might actually use this as like my accountability video, um, but also gets me help, helps me get really clear on like uh, what I wanna buy versus like, there's nothing that I need, but I know that I desire a lot because it's easy to buy makeup. But I think it helps me also figure out like really what makeup I'm going to purchase a nut. If you let me know if you want me to do more of these, I can do these videos every two weeks and happy to do so. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. It helps me out and comment and like below. And as always, please be very kind to yourself and others and just be you. Until next time, beauty fan, take good care. Bye.